Hey everybody, today let's talk about finding a place to rent in Dumaguete. I hope you like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. A few viewers and subscribers have been coming to Dumaguete in the past few weeks. Everybody on a different agenda and a different plan. But the one thing they have in common is they're looking for a place to live. Now, when you're coming to Dumaguete, the best thing to do is have a place to stay before you get here. Let that be a hotel or an Airbnb. I'm going to recommend you stay at least a week somewhere and start looking. If you're going to look on your own, you know, boots on the ground type thing, you're going to rent a bike or you're going to buy a motorbike and you're going to check out the city to determine what part of the town do you want to live in. Do you want to live in Valencia? Do you want to live in Bacon, Darwin, or do you want to be in Dumaguete where the action is? So you have to make that choice and once you make the choice you can really hone in on something to find. Now me, I'm going to preach using an agent and I'm going to tell you Carol again because Carol is honest. She shows up when she's supposed to show up. If it's not available, she's going to tell you it's not available. She's not going to take you to places that don't fit your budget, that aren't in your requirements. When you deal with someone reputable, and that could be Alma, could be Carol, there's many good agents here. They're going to be straightforward to you, and they're going to tell you what's available and what's not. But you have to tell them your requirements. If you want a three-bedroom, two-bath, single-story, that's what they're going to find you. If you want a three-bedroom, one-bath, two-story, whatever it is, they'll find it for you. If you're not sure what you want, you just tell, tell them your budget. If your budget's 20K or 25K, just tell them what your budget is. And they'll show you places that will fit your needs. They know the landlords. They know the owners of these properties. They know the good ones that are going to give you back your deposit. They know the bad ones who are going to stiff you on your deposit at the end. They know the ones that are going to take care of your complaints because they've had tenants there before. As they don't like to deal with bad renters, people who don't pay their rent, people who damage the property, they don't want to deal with bad landlords either. Now if you're going on your own, you don't know what you're getting into, you don't know the neighborhoods, you don't know the transportation in the area, the agent's going to help you. And they're not going to charge you. They get their money from the, the landlord, they get a commission from the landlord. So once you find a place, either on your own, or with the help of an agent, if you find this place, then negotiate. Negotiate the price, negotiate the deposit. If you don't like the stove, you don't like a light fixture, talk to them about changing it. If the hot water unit doesn't work, ask them to change it. If you don't ask, nothing will happen. The next thing is, once you find the place you like, don't be afraid to leave a deposit right there and then because all the good places are going to be taken up fast. So if you find the place you like, leave a few thousand peso deposit and then once you have a move-in date, when you move in, before you give them their their deposit and the first month's rent, do a walk through the unit. Walk through the place. Check to make sure it's clean just like you do back home. Make sure everything's working. Open the refrigerator. Is, does the light come on? Does it work? Open up you know, the cabinets. Uh, go in the bathroom. Flush the toilet. Turn the water on. Does it have good pressure? Let it run for a little bit. See if the tank runs out. See where the water's coming from. Check all the outlets. Plug a few things in to make sure all the outlets are working. Sometimes this outlet on this wall will work, but the other one won't. So check all of them, all of them that you're going to use. Go sit on that sofa, make sure it's comfortable. Shake the table, make sure the legs aren't wobbly and breaking. You're responsible for these items with your deposit, so make sure they're good before you get them. And if you have any complaints or anything that needs to be fixing, talk to the owner that moment. Tell them, hey, I'll move in, but you need to fix these for me to give you, you know, the second month of the deposit. Make sure they have a financial stake into fixing something. And every apartment and house isn't perfect. When you move in, you have to look past the little things and decide, okay, I can make this work for me. I can make this my home. 
you have to look at the overall picture. You're going to be living there for six months, a year, two years, whatever your lease is. Is that exactly the place you want to live? Is that the view you want to see every morning you get up? Is there enough room on that counter for you to put a coffee pot? Is that enough room on that counter for a blender? What electrical items are you going to have in the kitchen? Is there enough room in the closet for you? If you have a girlfriend, is there enough room in that closet for you and the girlfriend? And if she has a child that you're going to need a second bedroom or a third bedroom for, is it big enough for their needs? Is the mattress good? Me personally, I always buy a new mattress, but not everybody's going to do that. You can buy mattress covers. You know, you're a grown man, she's a grown woman, you've rented other places before, so you know how to deal with the stuff. It's no different here in the Philippines. But they're not going to clean these places until they're rented usually. And they're not going to fix everything until they're rented. They're not going to make that investment unless they know for sure they have a tenant. And by using an agent, you can make sure all this stuff gets done before you move in. If you're on your own, boots on the ground, and you found a for rent sign, and you found the right place for you, deal with it the same way. Make sure before you give her or him all their money in the deposit and first month's rent, the place is in move-in condition. It's exactly the way you want it, or at least close to the way you want it. And check everything. Make sure everything works. Many people have told me, oh, these outlets didn't work, or the stove didn't work, or the wash machine they left me doesn't work. Turn them on. Make sure they're working. Me, I moved into my house and I never checked water pressure. And that's the one thing I wish I would have done. The water pressure in my house is low. I have to wait a moment for the tank to refill during the day. At night I have great pressure, but during the day a lot of people are using the water. So check everything. And let the water run for a bit. Flush the toilet a couple times. I hope you take a moment to like this video. And leave me a comment. What problems did you find in the house that you rent? If you already live in Dumaguete. Do you have a problem with karaoke or animal noise? And how is your landlord? Do you have a good landlord? Also, look at the electric meter. Write down what the meter, the meter reading is right now. Take a picture of it. Look at the water meter. Same thing. Take a picture of the reading. So when you get the bill, whatever kilowatt hour you didn't use, that you deduct from your next rent. And let the landlord know you're going to do that. When you get the bill, send them a copy of it. You know, just take a snapshot of it. And take a copy of it. You don't know when their electric bill comes. Does it come on the end of the month, first month? It changes all the time. It's up to the electric company. Same thing with the water. Make sure you know how you're getting your internet. If you're getting it yourself, do they already have a source? Does Phil product already wired up to the house or apartment? Or is it a satellite? Find out how it works. Find out how much it is before you sign that lease. All these questions, you should have a list of questions to ask when you go into this unit or house or apartment you're going to rent. Does it have a secure gate around it? Is there a place for you to park your motorbike? Maybe you don't have one now, but you're going to have one later. You're going to have some sort of transportation later. And if you're never going to have transportation, how far is it to the, to the traffic where you can catch a trike or a jeepney? How far is the walk? These are questions you need answered before you take possession. It's all doing your due diligence. Don't have buyer's remorse after you rent two or three weeks later. Look at everything you can. And you can't, see, you can't remember everything. You're going to overlook a few things. But the basics should be good. You know, the screens in the door, are they working? The shades, are they working? Do the curtains work? Are they torn? If you're getting bedding, you know, if it's a semi-furnished or furnished apartment, are you getting sheets? If you're not getting sheets, then you have to go buy some or bring them with you. Find out all these answers to these questions ahead of time. Make sure you know what's being supplied to you and what you have to bring on your own. 99% of all these landlords are good people. They want to have happy tenants who pay their rent on time. Don't complain. And the reason you won't complain is ahead of time you've taken care of all the issues. 
if you have a problem, I don't consider it a complaint. I consider a problem something to be addressed. Complaining is complaining about the chicken two lots over, the dog two lots over. They have no control over that. But in the compound you're renting, walk around. Do the people have dogs? Do the people have chickens? If it's a gated community, I've noticed a lot of the gated communities, there's a lot of dogs. Every house seems to have a couple dogs that bark when you walk by. Is that going to bother you? And if so, then you don't want to live there. I don't believe in going back in the middle of the night to see how everything is, but if you want to, go ahead. If they're playing karaoke all night long, I really don't think so. Karaoke is usually played on these little restaurants and little bars that stay open all night or stay open late. If there's a little restaurant close by to your house, find out what time it closes. Go up there and ask them if they sing karaoke at night. Maybe the answer is no and you have no worries. Maybe yes and they play until 10 at night. You don't know unless you ask and you check on these things. We have somebody plays karaoke down, down from our house. But it's off by 8.30, 9 o'clock at night. And it's not really loud. The speakers are pointing in a different direction. My neighbors have chickens. My neighbors have turkeys. My neighbor across the way just got a pig that I hear every morning. Those things don't bother me, but they might bother you. So look hard at what you're running. Check it out really good. Leave a small deposit to hold it for you, but then check it and make sure Make sure everything is the way you want it before you give the landlord the first month's rent and all the deposit they want. And negotiate price if you can. Negotiate the amount of deposit you need. And I'm going to suggest making the shortest term lease as possible if it's your first place in Dumaguete. Because if you don't like it and you want to leave, well, you still have to take care of your lease or you're going to forfeit your deposit. If you have any questions about what to look for when you're running an apartment or a house in Dumaguete, feel free to leave them below in the comments section. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching, and until next time, like and subscribe. See you later.